Hi, everybody. It's Lisa Campion, and this is the Miracle of Healing on Empower Radio, where conscious people come together to explore the world of healing and heal the planet one person at a time. Today is the second part of a two-part series we are doing with spiritual teacher Bob Lancer. Um, we did the first one on spiritual living, and this um, broadcast is on spiritual healing. And I, it made me wonder, do our spirits really need healing? And if so, how do we do it? Um, and what does that even mean? So I just wanted to uh, bring, uh, introduce Bob here and bring him bring his him and his gifts to you all. And Bob is a full-time spiritual teacher and healer. He has been for the past 30 years. His current focus um, is helping people to evolve spiritually using something called the method uh, as a means for transforming emotional suffering into profound states of inner peace. I um, mean, he works with the Kabbalah and the and images of the Tarot to help people do that. So thanks so much for being here with, with us again today, Bob. My pleasure. My pleasure. So your question was, does the spirit need healing? And that's interesting because when I think of spiritual healing, I usually think of allowing a spirit of healing to come mm. us into the physical plane, into our circumstances, into our consciousness as a whole. Mm -hmm. um, so that's really how I look at spiritual healing. I guess in a sense you could say the healing of the spirit. If we look at the spirit, if, if, we, if we define spirit as our sort of the, the, the quality of our energy, the, 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 the pattern of our, the energy flowing through us, there could be a rupture, there could be a, a sense of a wound, there could be a misalignment. So in the work that you and I are going to be talking about here, the work that I do, um, we are going to be um, looking at, um, I guess, the whole the whole thing of, of, of how do I become a channel for a whole harmonious, uh, spiritually integrated spirit to flow through my consciousness into my own life and into the lives of those I am in contact with. Yeah, how do we do that? Well, you know, we do it. It, it, start, it always starts with awareness, okay? It starts with awareness of your current state, the current feeling state that you're in. And then it's learning how to connect to this central point of stillness within you, right? So it's a skill. Um, spiritual living, spiritual healing, being on the spiritual path, it's not about beliefs. It's not about ideas. It's not about philosophy. It's not about metaphysics. It's literally a skill in working with spirit. And we look at spirit as another word for energy, the energy flowing through us, the spirit flowing through us. So as you practice meditation and using the method, um, which is a particular form of meditation that I guide people through, um, you allow your consciousness to go deep into the central point of stillness, deep in your being, where you can feel this sense of, deep inner harmony um, where you ex the, the experience you have in this central point is really one of perfection. We call it the divine presence. When you are making that connection within your own consciousness, going deep within into the central point of stillness, what flows through you is this state of harmony in order because what you really reached when you reach the central state of stillness within you you really reach the central state of stillness within the universe you reach the central state of you uh, 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 of stillness within the infinite state of consciousness itself and that's the place of perfect balance order and harmony you then become a channel that energy flows through you and it does the work of organizing, it's like a magnetic field that organizes and orchestrates every aspect of your, of your physical, mental, emotional life, of your, of, of your circumstances, and it flows through you into anyone that you're having contact with. You can, it, it can be mental contact, it can be emotional contact, it can be physical contact with someone in, in your vicinity. And ultimately, it, it, it flows into the world. To, to dissolve disorder, to dissolve chaos, to, dis, you know, disorder is, is another word for illness, right? And so it spreads into the world, there's this healing, harmonizing force. And 
from from the the way I understand it, from the way that it's been handed down to me, is that a, a human being has only one purpose. The purpose of the human being is to be a channel for this energy to flow. We could call it God, a channel for God to flow into the world. God flows into the world through human consciousness that's willing to cooperate with that process. That's how we fulfill the purpose of our lives. We dissolve karma and we start to experience abundance and healing and, and, and joyfulness. But what do we do if we're triggered? What do we do if we're a mess? What do we do if there's so much static in our system that we can't get to that piece? When we do the method. Uh, the method is a, a way of disengaging from this from the static, right? But you know, you have to be at a certain point in your in your own spiritual growth process where you're even ready to to make the decision to let go of the drama, to let go of the trauma, to let go of the frenetic reactivity to life, where you where you get to the point because it's you know the large bulk of humanity is totally attached to their trauma, is totally attached to their frenzied inner state that they live in. This is the way they want to live. This is where they're at. Mm. You can't really help people to some degree. You can you can you can ameliorate some of the things going on in their lives. And to the degree that their lives and your lives are intersecting, you can actually do repairs um, because they're connected to your life. Um, for example, let's say you have a um, Let's say you are divorced and you have a sick child, and you you work on the healing process in, in in your own space, right? Now it may be karmically that the the what the child is going through has to do with the mother's actions, right? If let's say the mother or if, 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 okay, and, and let's say it's me, and and let's say it's my ex-wife, there may be a karmic situation going on between her and the child. But if I go into the healing place. The child starts to get better, right? And her karma will have to play out in some other way. So, hmm. if feeling that in, in, in triggered, right? The first question is, you know, you have freedom of choice. Do, do you want to stay in this state? Do you want to continue to blame your circumstances, blame other people? Do you want to get all riled up and 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 execute vengeance on people? Is that where you want to be, or right? Do you realize this this way is not for me anymore. I've gone down that dark path. It doesn't work for me anymore. I've tried it. I've experimented with it. I left the Garden of Eden. I don't like where I am. I want to come back. I want peace. I want so it's almost like people have to get to a certain level of suffering, right? Like when you've had enough suffering, when you've had enough pain, then yeah. there's an opening for this to happen. It could be that, but it could also be that there are basically two different species of human beings. There's the animal human and there's the spiritual human. And the animal human might believe that they're very religious and very spiritual. They might believe they believe in God. They might go to church all the time. They might go to synagogue. They might pray. They might do all the things they're supposed to do. But it doesn't mean that they're actually having a spiritual experience or they're here to fulfill a spiritual purpose. They're on a different path. The spiritual human being, is, is it's like two separate species within the human race. We hunger for a spiritual experience. We, we hunger for a direct contact with the experience of the divine. We don't want to just be thinking about the divine. We learn, we, when we find a way to open up to have a divine experience, we pursue that. That is the pursuit of healing. When you allow that divine presence to come through your being, because you've learned how to get there. See, it's not just a matter of, I believe it's there, therefore I'm saved. You've got to learn how to navigate to get to that place. And there are spiritual teachings that have always been around to guide you there. There are teachers that show up when you're ready to go there. And then you can go to that place. And that allows the divine healing energy to flow into your circumstances. And then you learn how to stay in that connection. You know, in biblical terms, it's seek ye first the, the kingdom of righteousness of your and all this will come unto you. Literally, how you start to live when, when you have the opportunity to do so, if you choose to do so. So... When we say well, you have to suffer enough to get to that point, there may be individuals who are just going to be suffering. You know, they're just not on the spiritual plane. They may never get to the spiritual plane. Their soul may never get to the spiritual plane. They may go the same process as an animal goes in their incarnation and reincarnation process, but they never really have a spiritual awakening. Is that like a 
just like a process of evolution, like the evolution of the soul? Some souls are on an evolutionary process and some souls are not. If you go back to the ancient Greek mysteries where they talk about the, the source of all being is something called the spiros. And the spiros is this, 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 this perfect sphere of infinite love and perfection and beauty. But coming through the spiros, there are two different souls that come into being. There are souls of love and souls of strife, souls of spirituality and souls of the animal kingdom. Hmm. Those two souls have always been, there's always been a conflict between those two souls. You know, that's what Zoroastrianism is all about, the darkness and the light. So there's always been a kind of a conflict because the souls who are the, the, what we call the animal humans, those who are totally dedicated to the material plane, they're all about control and getting what they want. Hmm. They're not about questioning what they want. If I want it, it's good. If I get it, it's good. If I if I don't want it, it's bad. If I get what I don't want, that's bad too. If you give me what you want, I'll take care of you. If you don't give me what you want, what I want, I will attack you. But at the spiritual level, you say, okay, I have this desire. Is this the right desire for me? Mm -hmm. is, there, is there a better path? Just because I have this desire doesn't necessarily mean it's the right thing for me. You could desire heroin. It might not be good for you, right? You can desire to be with someone who abuses you over and over again, and then you start to question your desires, and then you start to open up to something higher. If you're on the spiritual path, spiritual human, you start opening up to something higher. You tell me, God, what should I do? What is the right thing to do? You don't go to the Bible to find out. You don't go to a minister to find out. You go deep inside your soul to open up to something the ancient Greeks called gnosis, G-N-O-S-I-S, true knowing. You have the spiritual human has the capacity for true knowing. The materialistic human says there is no truth. It's whatever I believe is true. Whatever the majority believes is true. There's no actual truth. You can't find it. The spiritual human knows how to be still and know the I am God within. Right. And and so uh, it's so interesting that you said that because I, I always thought there was sort of a process of evolution that you might start in more of that. Um, the lower chakra state, you know, and that we evolve into the higher, you know, the higher chakras um, as we go forward. And it sounds like you're saying that there's always that polarity, though. There's the polarity. We, the, the, the spiritual human is in the process of evolving. Mm -hmm. The material human, they're doing nothing to evolve. They completely shut that system out. They shut out their soul. They shut out the spiritual path. They shut it out. They're not interested. They've made the choice. They made the karmic choice. There is no God. Now, they may say they believe in God, they may even think they believe in God, but there no, there's no actual process going on to connect with divine union. Now you'll find many people in religious institutions who will tell you, you can't know God. You can't experience true knowing. You can't know the truth. You've got to do what the rabbi tells you. You've got to do what the Talmud tells you. You've got to do what the priest tells you. You've got to do what the minister tells you. You've got to do what the Bible tells you, and you've got to follow what the Bible tells you is what I say the Bible means by what it tells you. And they'll say it's, it's the ultimate arrogance to think that you can have a divine experience. There's no evolution for them. They're not, they're not going anywhere. This is their level. This is where they stay. But for those who aspire to know God, there is evolution. And you continually go through a process of releasing the personality to allow the divine to work through you. And then you allow the personality to be an instrument of divine and for we who are following this path, this is the ultimate fulfillment for us. If you go to the other kind of human and you say, follow this path, that would be hell for them. Right. They have no interest in it. And very often we wind up marrying two different species in the human race, marry each other because the, the spiritual human being doesn't even realize how truly spiritual they are. Right. And they finally recognize that this person they're trying to take with them does not have the capacity to go. It's mm. not dharma it's not their karma they're not it, it's not even their species they're a different kind of a species interesting yeah and so but we can also help them because to the degree to which they get in touch with someone who's radiating in that divine energy and anybody can learn how to do this in fact everybody who's on the spiritual path who's drawn to the spiritual path who wants to truly lead a life a godly life to feel that true sense of deep spiritual connection you can do it it's available to you. Just let God know, this is what I want. And you'll find the book, you'll find the teacher, you'll find the class, and it'll take you further and further and further. And then each time you reincarnate, you come back where you left off. Just like each time you go to sleep at night, right? When you wake up in the morning, 
you where you left off, right? The mm -hmm. same with incarnation. When you come back into the next life, you're where you left off. The only difference is you don't have any memories of where you were the, the life before because that was all that was all extinguished as you surrendered to the divine after the previous lifetime. You no longer identified with that personality. You realize you're completely identified with the soul being, the eternal being, the true self, the higher self. That becomes your true identity. Everything else melts away. And that's why when you come back, you don't really remember. Sometimes you can have some memories, but typically people don't have no memory of, of the past life. Whereas when you wake up in the morning, you, you do remember who you are and what you're supposed to do today. Hmm. So, so when you're on this path, all, all you're about, and you and I have talked about this before, all you're about is, is two things. The spiritual path is the simplest thing in the world. Get centered, stay centered. Get centered, stay centered. If you win the lottery, get centered, stay centered. If you lose your purse, get centered, stay centered. Because when you're in that centered space, no matter what's going on around you, when you're in that centered space, the healing influence of the divine flows through you and organizes everything and orchestrates everything in a beautiful, miraculous, splendid way. And that, it's so um, hard when you first told me that because I was like, but I, I want to be happy if I win the lottery. Right. I want to be happy if I find my purse. Like, yeah. how, does, that, does living that way take away your happiness? Absolutely. Because what happens is it, 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 you're, you're, now you're stuck in the pairs of opposites. So mm -hmm. today you won the lottery and then tomorrow you lose, you, you know, you lose your house. And, and, and to the degree that you got excited about this, you're going to get depressed about that. And you just go back and forth and back and forth. When you are centered, re everything is the same. Even when you're dying, it's the same thing. It's just another opportunity to work on my self-mastery, to get centered. Because when you're truly centered, you're fulfilled. You're fulfilled because you're fulfilling your purpose. You experience this perfect state of inner peace and inner harmony, and nothing can upset it. It doesn't matter what you lose. It doesn't matter what you gain. You're already there. You're already fulfilled. And you're just radiating this joy and this peace and this harmony, and you're experiencing it. So you don't go through the devastations of the opposite side of getting. So it's it's more like a contentment. So you're sort of staying in the middle with pe a pe Is it peace? Is it harmony? Is it contentment? What's the feeling that it's you bigger. have in the middle? It gets bigger and bigger. It gets bigger and bigger. It's it's contentment. It's peace. It's harmony. Uh, the, 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 the it's the joy that you experience when you realize that you have nothing to be concerned about. You have absolutely, you're totally safe. You have nothing to be concerned about. God is love, right? There's nothing to be concerned about. No matter what it appears to be going on, no matter what's taken from you, right? You just use the method to get free of your attachment to what's leaving. And you realize, oh my goodness. I think the only reason why things went away was to come back at a higher level. They go away and they come back at a higher level. They go away and they come back at a higher level. So there's never anything to grieve over. You know, if you look back and you look at the whole picture, the day you win the lottery, you'll see something has to counterbalance that that's going to ultimately happen. That's going to take all the joy out of it. And you're going to experience the opposite emotion when the opposite thing happens. Therefore, you see it all and you just completely balance. You say, well, this is there and this is there. So really nothing's happening. And when you're on the spiritual path, I know it sounds vague, nothing's ever happening. There's nothing going on. You're just experiencing this peace and joy and love and fulfillment. It's not like a bland state of boring flatness. It's not flatlining. It's the opposite. There's this sun, this glowing sun of joy that radiates from you all the time. And when, when that's not present, you do the method to clear yourself of whatever's holding you back from there. And the method just takes you deeper and deeper into the fulfillment of just being. Just the joy, the absolute joy of just being just radiates from you. And that radiation that joy that radiates from you that's the healing so if somebody comes to you with a problem go to god go within look for that place of inner stillness inner peace don't even think about what they're going through just go into that place of inner peace allow yourself to be in that place of inner stillness, and just trust that energy is the divine presence that's grace coming into the situation and how do we deal with people that come at us with aggression or hostility or we're, we're getting like, you know, there's a lot of that in social media these days or in our, maybe in our families. Like how do we stay in that peace when we're getting faced with aggression? 
Well, first of all, you, you got to look at the aggression as the result of a choice you're making. You know, if you're looking at social media and you're facing aggression, you know, you got to measure how much am I exposing myself to this? Right? So everything has to be in right measure. If there, you know, if there are going to be people in your life who are going to be against you. They don't even know they're against you. They're just jealous. They're just disconnected from you. They don't know how to how to nurture your soul. They they react in negative ways. You have to recognize when that's happening, and then you you disengage. You know, you you make the choice. You know, my teacher Isidore used to say, in all things, the master works on three things: attention, choice, and decision. Now pay attention to the choices and decisions you're making because that's what takes you where you're going. You know, if you're facing aggression, there's there's something you're doing to put yourself in that situation. Mm -hmm. Right? And sometimes it's just internal stuff. Sometimes the external is a reflection of the internal. So if someone's coming at me and they're very angry, there's the possibility that I've been carrying a lot of anger around that I haven't mm -hmm. really been dealing with. Mm -hmm. right? But when I process through that using the method, then the aggression stops. So ultimately, there, there won't be many encounters with in-your-face aggressiveness for one if you're making the choice to follow the path of harmony. Right. And yeah, we have like, we only have just a few minutes left, yeah. um, but is there one thing, one little tiny thing, or we don't have time to go through the whole method and we can we can post the links um, where people can find the method um, for you here, but um, what's one thing we can do like in a minute that will help us attain that kind of balance? Take, take a breath right now, take a nice deep breath and let go. Let go of all your problems, let go of all pressure, all concern. Give yourself the feeling right now that you're in the loving hands of the divine. There's nothing you have to be concerned about. Everything's being handled by the universe. God is truly love. Let go of the, what the mind is telling you. Let go of the stories your mind is telling you. Don't be concerned about appearances. Open yourself up right now to a deep feeling of inner peace. Go as deep as you can into peace and harmony and love and joy right now by letting go, by relaxing, relaxing your spirit, relaxing your body, relaxing your mind. Allow yourself to experience the joy of your true nature. Just experience the joy of being. Let it all go. And then just practice staying there in your feelings. And then people like you and people like me can help people get there, stay there, and grow from there. Hmm. Great. And if people want to find you, like I know we have, um, you have a couple of websites, you have a couple of books. How can people learn more about the method and how to work with you? Go to lovethemethod.com, L-O-V-E-T-H-E, the method.com. There it is on the screen. Go to lovethemethod.com, uh, contact me. Um, I would love to have a conversation with you. Um, I work with individuals over the phone via Skype. And um, you know, uh, let me know what, what you need and I'll see if there's something I can do to help you. That's great. And I think you have a couple of um, different cop versions of the method that are available so that people can go through um, yep. on that website and we have and something on YouTube too that people can find there. Yep, yep. Yeah. Just link up just link up with Lisa and Lisa's my link. So we <laughs> Yeah, and you can find it on my on my website too, Lisa Campion. Oh, Lisa. That's right. <laughs> so. me too, Lisa. Awesome. Well thank you so much for being with us today, Bob. Um you know I love your take on this. It's so different from a lot of like other you know, how other spiritual people talk and other spiritual leaders. And it's really like cuts to the chase and it's so effective. So I'm super happy to um, to bring you back on the show again. Yay. Yay. And thank all of you guys for joining us uh, here today um, on the Miracle of Healing. You can find me at my website, lisacampion.com. I hope you drop by and visit. Um, and you can, um, you can find... Uh, find us here on YouTube and on different podcast channels. So thank you so much for joining us today on the Miracle of Healing, where we are healing the planet one person at a time right here on Empower Radio.